So our today's session is about a creation of web application and mobile apps, which can be used for uh, data collection, data monitoring, data visualization, and data analysis for different kinds of uses. Um, so this is the agenda for this session. Uh, a brief introduction to web applications, and then we'll focus more into the uh, ArcGIS Web App Builder. Uh, in that, we'll see the two types of web, web App Builder. One is uh, from ArcGIS Online, and other one is a developer edition, which used for making uh, customizations. Then we'll see ArcGIS dashboard and a demo of uh, how to create uh, dashboards. And then we'll see the mobile apps. Mm. Yeah, first we'll start from the web applications. Uh, you all know uh, web application uh, is an application program that is stored on a remote server and delivered over internet through the browser interface, uh, which is also known as uh, client apps. So uh, in the EC3 platform itself, uh, providing uh, different kinds of web applications categorized into uh, ready to use uh, apps and custom apps. So the data for the application can be in any format, such as CSV files, shape files, KML, file geo database, uh, inter enterprise geo database, or any kind of this data. Uh, from this available data source, um, uh, any kind of data layer such as feature layer, raster layer, uh, vector layer, scene layers, image layers uh, can be created through uh, ArcMap or ArcPro or even from ArcGIS only. And it can be published as a web maps or web scenes. Um, this web map is a starting point where someone who is not a JS expert uh, he can make this uh, information product and then quickly uh, easily build and deploy any new web application around it using any one of the configurable application templates or story maps, dashboard or collector uh, and other field, field mobile apps. Or even any custom application can also be created uh, using uh, APIs available, RJS API for JavaScript and RJS API for Python among this. So among this uh, many web applications, uh, now we'll see uh, how to create a web apps using Web App Builder, followed by RJS dashboard and mobile apps. So uh, before we start, uh, first we'll get a clarification on when we need Web App Builder or when we go for a Web App Builder among the available, uh, con available configurable apps. Uh, in the configurable app templates, you simply put your data in there and then you can configure it like changing the color, changing the title, or adding the custom logo like this. These templates are uh, really useful and really easy to use. Uh, as you will see, however, uh, they are designed to support a specific workflows. So you might have a template for editing. You might have a template to show data comparison. You might have a template that show uh, data changes over time. They are very workflow focused. Uh, sometimes you may need a function X from uh, one template and uh, combine it with the uh, other function from other template. Uh, so where the web app builders comes, comes to play. So now um, when, uh, when you need uh, more functionality than those of available templates, uh, when you wish to integrate or uh, remix the functionality from one or more than one ARM templates, uh, this Web App Builder is the best option to serve your needs. It is uh, really powerful. Uh, compared with other app templates, uh, this Web App Builder provides, uh, provides you more functions, larger variety of user interfaces. It allows a more flexible configuration of functions and user face. Also, it is a customizable based on the specific needs and extensible. Um, now uh, we see the basics of Web App Builder. Uh, this Web App Builder, uh, it's an application that allows you to build a brand new web apps without having to write any single line of code. It supports uh, both 2D and 3D contents. Uh, These apps uh, do not require any plugins and it will run on any device. It is available inside the ArcGIS Online itself and also the portal for ArcGIS, uh, which is a component of uh, ArcGIS Enterprise. It is uh, fully integrated with uh, the ArcGIS platform. Uh, it provides a configurable widgets and themes based on your needs. 
also it comes out uh, uh, with many of uh, many out of the box widgets and themes uh, it basically built on rjs api for javascript and uh, html technology so if you are a developer you can write custom code to create a custom functionality uh, uh, you could download the source code for the app or make changes as you like or you could use a developer edition and make the changes uh, so um, with the web app builder you will notice uh, you have two different options to work with the first option is uh, within the rjs online or a portal for rjs where you can access the web app builder within that home page itself uh, it can be activated from a uh, web map or web scene or from the content page uh, in the rjs online and then other option is uh, to use the developer edition um, don't let that name intimidate you uh, you can download the developer edition and install it on your own machine and start working with it the reason why you might use a developer edition is if you are a developer and you want to make changes or if you want to apply uh, your custom widgets you can uh, go with the developer edition here the key takeaway is no matter what option you choose uh, the both option the user experience is same so uh, when we look into uh, the components of web builder uh, you can see sorry you can see uh, right side it has a, a design pan uh, which includes the configurable components such as uh, themes and widgets and maps and attributes on the left side it has a preview pan uh it gives you the user experience of uh, what you see is what you you get uh, as you make changes in the design panel you will see those changes a bit uh, live in the uh, left side so you can choose uh, which functionality to include how it's going to look and feel and what data to include it got a really uh, elegant and beautiful experience So uh, when we move into the workflow uh, for how to create our first application, um, it's really a simple workflow. Uh, this is the screen screen capture from the help document. Uh, this shows you uh, how to create an app with a simple six steps. Uh, first, you will uh, choose the type of application, uh, either 2D or 3D, and then you can pick any suitable theme. Uh, then select the web map in case of 2D app. or else a uh, web scene in case of 3d app uh, which contains the information to show in the application then a uh, widgets uh, based on the required app functionality and configure the app attributes uh, like name of the application and logo and you can see the preview and launch it uh, so once you launch launch it you will get the url of the application and it can be shared with the public or within your organization or within Uh, within the organization if you want to share with any specific group uh, you can share based on the sharing settings so now uh, i'll i'll show you the quick demo of how to uh, make an application from rjs online uh, hope uh, everyone have a rjs online account or else uh, you can Uh, sign up for a, a new rjs online account uh, using your uh, gmail gmail itself so once you log in with your rjs credentials uh, in the content tab uh, you will have a two option uh, one is uh, to create a new items and other one is to create a uh, customizable apps uh, from here uh, you can find the option uh, called web app builder uh, here you can Uh, choose the type of applications either it's 2d or 3d and you can give the name for your application and you can give any uh, relevant tag thing so once you uh, give the title then it will redirect to uh, the rjs web app builder uh, interface so here you can see uh, in the left, um, left side uh, it has all the configurable items uh, from here uh, under the themes tab 
you can select any uh, suitable team team for your application uh, there are many different themes are there uh, it um, it basically uh, gives you a different layout uh, way to place your widgets and everything uh, and also there is option to change uh, styles apply different colors and to choose the layout position uh, from the selected theme uh, then uh, on the second option uh, we need to choose the web map uh, which contains the data to show uh, in the application uh, either if you have already created a web map uh, you can choose from here uh, or else uh, you can create a new web map uh, from here uh, the map viewer will be open. Uh, there will be an uh, option to add layers uh, from from your uh, local or else you can add layers from web or anything. Um, so uh, now I already have uh, have a web map uh, loaded from uh, World Atlas, uh, which contains the demographic data of uh, India. I load that web map. Uh, so once the web map is loaded, you can set the extent here uh, or else uh, you can use the um, your web maps default extent. Now I'll, I'll set this uh, current extent. Uh, and then in the next step, you can see the widgets. There are um, many widgets available uh, here. These are the on screen widgets, um, basic tools to navigate with your maps zoom in zoom out option and all these basic tools are available here and if you want uh, any any other widgets uh, you can go here and add your uh, new widgets um, uh, here uh, plenty of widgets are available based on your needs uh, you can uh, choose your widgets now for example i will add a base map gallery once you select any widgets uh, the configurable interface will be open there you can you know, uh, select or give your configurations based on uh, your requirements. This is the base map widget. It will uh, list the different kinds of uh, base maps uh, like imagery and topographic and everything. Uh, you can change here uh, whatever uh, needs for you. And for example, um, now I will add one more widget, uh, query. So in the query widget, uh, you can give, uh, you can say first you need to select the data, uh, like which uh, layer you need to use. And then uh, you can uh, specify uh, the criteria here, uh, like uh, this is the demographic data. So if you want to see uh, the data of uh, belongs to any particular uh, district, uh, here you can uh, give the criteria. Uh, there are many options are available. Uh, I'll give a unique and then uh, the, if you uh, click this checkbox ask for values, the user can uh, select their uh, values from the drop downs. And so uh, for the based on the selected district, uh, it will filter the uh, available districts uh, for that uh, state. Then uh, here also, if we click um, option to get from the user, um, we can choose that option. And there are many other options also there um, to configure the pop-up window. If you want to, if you no wish to show all the attributes to the in the pop-up, you can configure here. And what uh, symbology you need to give for the results layer, uh, you can change here. And if you want to um, give option to export your results, uh, you can check this box and other uh, other options are available. You can go through this. So uh, once you order here, uh, it will be uh, uh, automate, added automatically here. Uh, you can save and uh, launch it. So uh, this is the URL uh, for the for your application. Uh, 
this you can share with uh, any uh, other or you can share with the public uh, so here if you can see uh, the criteria which we have uh, given in the configuration settings uh, it will display here uh, from here we can choose any uh, state and <coughs> we can uh, choose the district names uh, once you click apply uh, it will give you the result of uh, the features which are uh, satisfying that criteria uh, then in the result panel uh, it will list uh, all the attributes uh, belongs to that feature and if you can click uh, it will be comes in the pop out mm -hmm. you can uh, make customization of what information to display here and everything you can customize in the configuration settings page also here you can uh, see the preview of uh, how this application will look in other devices uh, like uh, in the cell phones how how it will be look uh, all this uh, you can see in the preview option and in last uh, you can change the uh, name of the application here and also you can change the logo here and other options are there once you save it here uh, it will be uh, automatically updated uh, you can get the url uh, from this uh, launch uh, this is all about uh, uh, the web builder uh, that can be uh, created using arcjs online so <coughs> this uh, apps uh, created with the web builder of online edition or uh, hosted in the objects online or portal for objects uh, it will become the items in the uh, content section uh, you can refer that uh, later and also you can download that app and you can reuse it uh, also you can customize uh, customize it then you can host it into your uh, own web server also all right uh, now uh, let's see about uh, developer edition um, right now uh, there uh, there are we think uh, like two persons who use this um, web developer edition if you are a, if you are not a developer uh, you are probably in the first group uh, you might be a configurator where uh, you can take the custom widgets and uh, you leverage it in the developer edition alternatively uh, if you are a developer uh, you write a custom code then uh, with the help of rjs api for javascript uh, you can create your new widgets from the scratch uh, or you can customize or uh, an extend with the existing uh, widgets so as mentioned uh, earlier uh, this web builder developer edition is a separate uh, download uh, and installed on your own machine uh, it has the same user experience as what we have seen in the rjs online Uh, so it's great if you are already familiar with the web builder uh, online then you can use this developer edition also um, the first uh, you need to download uh, this web builder sdk file uh, from the web builder uh, developer site so if you can see here um, here the option uh, option is available to download the latest version uh, now the latest version is 2.25 uh, once you click uh, uh, it can start download and also in this page uh, all the um, relevant uh, reference and guide and everything is there uh, you can refer this to start so uh, once uh, once you downloaded uh, the file uh, you can extract that zip folder and you can save it into your workspace uh, i'll show you the structure of the uh, web builder how it will look uh, here you can see uh, it has uh, 
different folders uh, one is client uh, in inside this client folder um, there will be uh, all the uh, required files will be stored uh, for our application and uh, in this stem app uh, the tori application files will be stored uh, in the stem app 3d uh, the 3d uh, apps files and all the existing widgets will be stored uh, inside this widget folder and the themes and other files will be stored here and you can see a uh, server uh, so once uh, uh, you start create your apps uh, all your apps will be saved under this apps folder so um, after after extracting uh, your files uh, you can simply uh, start your um, application by clicking this batch file so once you start uh, this page will be open uh, this is the url for uh, launch url for uh, your web builder uh, in this it will ask it will ask you uh, for your object's online credential and app id uh, so before that uh, you need to uh, create uh, one application in object's online and generate app id for that application and need to provide here uh, now we'll see how to create the app, app in the object's online the same uh, from the same content page uh, you can see here a uh, uh, new item option is there from that uh, you can select application and application type is web app here it will ask you the url for your application uh, here we need to uh, provide uh, the url which are coming here uh, with your system name and slash a web app builder and then uh, it will ask you the um, uh, title for your application then uh, click save click on save uh, so in the in this information page of uh, the app we have just created uh, in that under the settings tab uh, you can see the option to register this app application app under app registration section uh, here uh, you can click register and it will ask you the redirect you want here you can uh, provide uh, http slash uh, your mission name and also both http and https port we need to add here and you can click register uh, once you uh, register you will get this app id uh, this app id uh, we need to provide here and uh, in the url you need to provide your uh, organization account url so after that uh, once you click on continue it will ask you the permission to access the item uh, which we are created now you can uh, give the permission yeah then uh, uh, the web app builder uh, interface will open uh, the steps we have done before that is a one time process once you can uh, provide uh, your app, app registration process uh, on the next time uh, if you launch it will not ask uh, the all the informations will be stored inside this sign in info file you can see uh, from portal url and the app id which we are using here so from this page uh, you can start uh, create your new application um, the same uh, experience uh, what we have seen uh, in rg sunning the same uh, experience here also you can choose the type of application uh, 2d or 3d and you can Uh, give you a title for your application so the same methodology um, you can choose the theme and you can add a web map here and 
you can place all your widgets and change you can change the attributes and everything is same as it is um, so from this uh, now uh, in the developer edition we can create our own widgets also uh, he, here you can see uh, in the widget pool it will list all the existing widgets available in the client folder if you are uh, going to create your new widget uh, you can how how to do that uh, you can uh, now uh, in the client folder already some sample widgets are there now i will show you uh, inside the uh, stem stem app folder and under widget folder uh, you can find some sample widget also here uh, so now i will choose this demo widget uh, the basic widget folder will contain uh, one widget.js file and html file this uh, html file provides you the interface of how to look your uh, widget and you can give all the functionalities uh, in the widget uh, that js file and it will uh, in the css folder you can provide uh, your uh, css uh, stylings for your uh, widget and in the inside this image uh, folder you can provide the icon and uh, inside this NLS folder, you can give the uh, language uh, and what it should display here. All this uh, static contents you can provide here. And in the settings page, uh, when you can see uh, in the any uh, existing widgets, you will find one configuration page once you select that widget. So to design that configuration page, you can provide your uh, code uh, here in the settings page. And any uh, configurations like changing content, uh, you can provide in the config uh, file. And in the manifest file, it will it will contain the uh, basic details of widget name and version, and all the details will be stored in this uh, manifest file. So once you are uh, ready with your uh, widget, uh, you can simply um, paste your uh, widgets uh, under the uh, widget folder of client folder. So after that, uh, if you can see here uh, that a newly added widget will be uh, displayed here. You can directly add it uh, here and you can start customizing it. Uh, so this is the page uh, which we are, will create uh, from the settings page. Uh, and here you can provide your configuration uh, text. Uh, this text information will be stored in the config file. So you can see here. <laughs> now, uh, what text I have given that will be displayed here. So likewise, we can either change it, uh, change this content using this uh, configuration setup page, or else we can directly change from the config file anything. So this is how we need to create a, any custom widget. Yeah, that's it uh, all about uh, Web App Builder. Uh, now I'll hand over uh, to Ali Jodi. She will continue on uh, OBJS dashboard. Thank you, Gayatri. Is this screen uh, visible? Uh, visible? Yeah, it is visible. Yeah, it is visible actually. Okay, thank you. So to begin with, uh, I'd like to give a brief introduction on RGS dashboard. A dashboard in general is a view of geographic information and data that allows us allows you to monitor events, make decisions, and see trends. Uh, dashboards are designed to display multiple visualizations that work together on a single screen. They offer a comprehensive view of your data and provide key insights for at a glance decision making. And RGS dashboard enables user to convey information by presenting location based analytics using intuitive and interactive data visualization on a single screen. And it allows us to monitor people, services, assets and events in real time. And uh, it involves no programming, rather provides a configurable user experience. Since it is a web browser based app, RGS dashboard work on desktop, tablets and uh, smartphones. 
So RJS Online gives you a full control of sharing your dashboard. So you can decide who sees them, your team or your organization or even the public. Moving on to the next slide, uh, a dashboard can be broadly classified into two types. One is interactive or attended, dis attended dashboard where the end user interacts with the dashboard. Uh, whereas un, there is one more uh, dashboard which is un, un, unattended, which, tip, which typically consume data sources and all the elements in the dashboard will reflect up, uh, updates accordingly. That is real time monitoring. So there are several ways to open or create a dashboard. Uh, the user can create a dashboard through app launcher or a map viewer, content page or a web page, web map item page, which I have listed in the right corner. So moving on to the next slide, we have web map. So having a meaningful map is an important step for creating a dashboard. The web map should contain relevant data and all the layers which should have a style like uh, symbology pop ups to make it more meaningful. So the user can set appropriate refresh intervals and choose the base map which uh, highlight which hi which helps in highlighting the data and which uh, uh, observe their uh, performance. Before configuring a dashboard, we must choose an appropriate layout that meets the requirement. So first, when before creating a dashboard, decide required and relevant elements, their contextual information and colors for your dashboard. Uh, there are different dashboard elements such as header, different types of charts, gauges and lists, etc., which make your dashboard more interactive and informative. So uh, uh, Arcade is an expression or scripting language made by history. It can perform mathematical calculations, manipulate text and evaluate logical statement. In a dashboard, you can take advantage of Arcade expression in two additional ways. One is data expression can be used as a data source for dashboards data driven elements. And one more is formatting expression can be used by the list indicators and table elements to provide uh, fine-tuned control over their look within a dashboard. We can also use embedded content in your dashboard, uh, such as web, web pages, video, or social media content to provide additional context to your dashboard. Uh, in addition to this, we can also add Survey123 forms or a web builder uh, apps in your dashboard to give additional scope and context. Uh, moving on to the next slide, we have interactive dashboards. So we can make our dashboard interactive to engage the engage end user with the user experience. The dashboard elements can interact with one another by triggering response in another element. Many kind of interactions are possible. One kind of example would be select and highlighting features on the map and in turn the serial chart is filtered accordingly. On the other hand, one even can trigger one or more actions such as on clicking a selector to filter data, list and gauge are filtered, ac filtered accordingly, which we will be seeing in a demo in the upcoming demo. So finally, we have mobile dashboards. So mobile dashboards are created same as desktop application, but it needs to refractor for mobile. When it comes to mobile dashboard, less is more because mobile dashboards have less real estate than their desktop counterparts. It can be challenging to create an aesthetically pleasing interface and it still provide users the ability to get the answers they need brief, briefly. Moving on the, to the demo. So for this app, for this demo, I have created a in, uh, demographic map web map. So in this, I have added a state demographics layer and uh, a state boundary layer. So this is the web map which I'm going to use in the application. So you, uh, as uh, Gayatri has uh, mentioned about creating a web app, the same process involves for creating a uh, dashboard. You have to create, uh, click on the create app. Using this, as you can see, there is a dashboard option. Once you click on this, uh, you'll be redirected to a, uh, 
the creation of new dashboard page there you can give a title for example i'm going to uh, use a demographic map so i'm give i'm giving a uh, name called demographic demographic app So you can give a short snippet of uh, summary for your app, which is demography. Once you click on uh, create dashboard, a dashboard will be created in a configuration mode, as you can see. So uh, they are provided with add element functionality and a walkthrough documentation. So to begin with, I'll add a map element all the maps created using, uh, as you can see, I, uh, once you click on add element or from here, it, uh, a list of elements will be displayed. Once you click on map, all the maps created using your ArcGIS online account will be listed under my maps. So I have, I'm using the map which I have created, which is India demographics map. So once you add your map, a configuration page will be opened. So for, for example, I want to enable pop-up for the layers added on top of the map and I want to add a legend. I want to have a base map switcher, a search widget and zoom in, zoom out. Uh, and if if I as a user wants to have a scale scale in, in the bottom of my application, I can use it either line or a ruler scale bar. So in this demo, I like to use line uh, scale bar. Uh, moving on to the next setting, we have a general setting. Here you can provide the name for your map and title for your map, which will be displayed on top of the map, uh, on, on below the header and on top of the map. And if you like to have a description, you can provide the description over here. And you can also change the color of the text and background color. And uh, to make the dashboard interactive, we have a map action tab and a layer action tab. So the map action tab will be enabled. For example, on click of the map, you want to do all the interaction with other elements. This can be done using map action. But since we, we didn't have any other element added on our application yet, so it is showing empty. And for layer action, you can see all the layers added on top of our map are listed over here. So in this, uh, there is state demographics layer. Here, I want to have a zoom in action. I want to enable a uh, show pop-up action and also filter action. So this can be done. And uh, since this uh, state layers are different and uh, uh, state demographics layers are different, it is asking for source field. That is, for example, if someone selects name, the target field will be state. So this is a connection between two different layers. So once it is done, a map will be created. And with all the widgets, uh, with all the tools which we have added, for example, I have added a search tool. So it is added over here and a legend tool is provided here. Since we have two layers, uh, the legend for the two layers are listed here. And we are provided with a base map uh, collection tool, which includes all the base map which are available in your ArcGIS online. And uh, this a common tool called zoom in, zoom out is provided here or in the right corner. You can use it to zoom in and zoom out your uh, application. So moving on to the next uh, element, we have the layout element. A layout of a dashboard is categorized into body, header, and sidebar. So a head first, uh, I'll create a header. A header is an area along the top of your dashboard that gives your dashboard a unique and uh, business standard identity. The header can be used to provide links to your additional content or to make it more interactive. You can you can add a selector. Uh, you can add uh, you can attach an action to your element. So for example, I'm going to add a header. So the title would be. India demography map. And I'm not going to add any subtitle and you can change the text color or a background color for your uh, header. And if you if you want, you can add the logo for your application and the background image. And for, uh, for example, you as a user want to uh, redirect the client or the citizen to some other application, you can add links over here. So once you have a label and URL, a redirected URL will be added on top of the header. 
So for now, I'll add this. Once I click on done, you can see there is uh, add selector button enabled. So using this, you can create a selector, which is nothing but a drop down or a list you can see. Uh, so I want to add a category selector. So the data for the category selector, uh, I'm going to use the grouped values. So for, for that, I'm going to select all the state name from the state demographics. That is, I have a plan that I'm going to give a state name in a selector. And once the uh, state name is selected, uh, the map should uh, filter accordingly. And all the elements which I'm going to create should filter accordingly. So I'm going to select state demographics layer. And uh, for category field, I'm going to use the name, which is the state name. And the sort by field will, would be state. Moving on to the next section, we have the selector. That is, uh, I want to give a label for this selector, which is select state, state name. And uh, I want to make it as a drop down and a single selection. You can also have a filter. That is, you can search on uh, inside the drop down. And I would like to have a none option. That is, uh, once the user doesn't want to select anything, that's that should be a uh, none option. So it is like all states. I'm going to give a name called all states. And actions. So once I select or select something in this drop uh, in the selector, uh, the map should change accordingly. For that, uh, I'm going to enable state demographics layer action. Since it is same data source, it is not asking for any other information. But in the state layer, it is a different layer, right? So uh, the source field for this layer is name. That is uh, the state demographics layer. It is name and the target field that is in this layer, which field you are going to apply this change. So that is state name. So once I click on done, that changes will be reflected and you save this. And you can see all the states are uh, listed over here in alphabetical format. Once I select on Andhra Pradesh, you can see the map is chain, map is uh, showing the changes. And after doing this, uh, you want to configure the element again, you have a configure button. Once you click on it, again, you can see everything, all the configuration mode. So I want to change the name of this category uh, uh, selector. So I can use rename option here and I can see state selector. Since uh, we will be keep on adding new elements, so it is better to use a proper name for your uh, element or uh, selectors. I'll save this. So moving on to the next section, we have the theme. Uh, in themes settings, you can change the theme and color of your uh, dashboard. As you can see right now, we have light theme. So if you want to change it to dark, it can be done. So as far as now, I'll use light theme. And you can change the background color of your dashboard or uh, border color, or you can also change the selection color. So this is the function of the theme. And in settings, you will have a, a general setting like uh, element resize or element expansion like this. Then I'll save this uh, dashboard. So right now we have created a simple dashboard with a map and a selector. So to make this dashboard more pro proactive, we can add different elements such as chart or indicator element depending on your data and, it, and your requirement. So for example, uh, if I want to add a uh, chart, so we are provided with different types of chart like serial chart, pie chart, uh, gauge, list, and indicator elements. So depending on your need, you have to select the different types of chart. For example, a serial chart visualizes one or more series of data points along horizontal axis and vertical axis, whereas a pie chart is not intended for comparing in, uh, individual sections, as you all know, with each other. Uh, a pie chart is generally used to show part to whole relationship for data composition. And uh, the indicator element is used to display summary statistics and uh, the list will be used to display all the all the attributes in the form of list. And you can also use a table to display your data. So in this case, I'm going to use a pie. I'm going to create a pie chart. So for, uh, first it asks us to select the layer for this uh, chart. So I'm going to use the state demographics layer. 
and once we have selected it is uh, asking for uh, data so here i'm going to use a uh, field the category so i'm going to create i'm planning to create a pie chart for uh, which shows the total population and uh, male population and female population so i'll select total population and the statistic will be average and uh, male population and female population as you can see on selection of the category field the uh, the chart is uh, changing accordingly moving on to the next category we have this chart so you can change the text color of this uh, uh, labels and you can also change the font size so i'd like to have it uh, some more smaller and uh, if uh, right now we have created a pie chart you can change this pie chart to a donut chart using uh, increasing the inner radius of the chart as you can see once i have increased the inner radius uh, it is converted to a donut chart so in this example i would like to use it as a pie chart and if you want to have a hover text you can uh, enable this enable this if not you can um, disable it moving on to the next section we have the labels so right now i have uh, included it as a percentage if you want to have it as a value you can you can see the difference it is uh, uh, changing it to million but i want i would like to have it as a percentage and you can also increase or decrease the label offset and the legend if you want to have a legend to make it more meaningful uh, you can use it so for example in this case i would like to use as a percentage as a legend and i would place this legend in the bottom and for value formatting that is uh, uh, here we have two decimal uh, points after two values after decimal so you can configure those under value formatting and under percentage formatting you can configure the percentage values so moving on to the next uh, section we have the slices and from here you can change the opacity of the chart and you can also change the color so for example i i want to change the color to some darker color so you can see it is changing to blue uh, different colors you can also uh, copy your hex code here and uh, change change accordingly so i would like to have it as a blue color you can change the slider to have uh, different shades of color so this can be done using uh, the slices option and you can also change the out outline of your uh, uh, chart like as you can see it is increasing the outline and since it is in the same color you will you will not change uh, you will not see the exact uh, color change so in general setting uh since i have mentioned before uh please give a proper name for your uh, elements so that it will be useful for you to uh, add attach action to your elements so i'll give a name called a population chart if you'd like to have a title for your uh, chart you can provide it using title and you can also change the color and uh, uh background color for your uh, titles moving on to the next section uh, since a uh, pie chart is a collection of data we we won't be able to provide any action for this pie chart so once we click on done so it is placed over here and if i as a user don't want to have this pie chart in the left corner you can use this drag item and move in move, uh, place it somewhere you can also group this element for example if i place it here so i have changed the position of the chart and the map and i would like to have it in the back uh, in the previous position so uh, the dashboard also allows us to group elements for example i would create one more element which is a list element so for this i am using the same uh, demographics data and you can see as i have mentioned about arcade the uh, the arcade expression can be used in list indicators and table so in the list if you want to have your own uh, formatting of the style or pop up you can enable the advanced formatting and over here uh, you can see a, a sample a basic template has been created you can modify this using the arcade knowledge you have 
So this is about list. I'd like to add us uh, one more chart. So for this, I'll use again the field and I'll uh, I'll create a chart for, uh, for example, literacy. The total literates we have. And in that, I want to have the uh, differentiation between male literates and uh, female literates. So once it is done, I'll just click OK and I'll just group up this. As you can see, there are two charts created, so you can differentiate this by uh, changing the title of your chart. So I have created a, a, a sample dashboard using the same demographic data. You can see I have created a bar chart and I have created for uh, two pie chart for literacy and illiteracy. And you can see once you click on uh, the bar chart, so everything will be changing accordingly. Uh, as you can see, the map has been filtered to Andhra Pradesh and the pie chart value is also changed to Andhra Pradesh. So once I uncheck this, the same will be repeated again. So this is how we make our dashboard more interactive. And we also have a proper example for a use case for our dashboard, which is Karnataka crop production dashboard. This dashboard provides us the information about district wide distribution for crop yield assessment. As you can see, I have added all the indicated elements like uh, the total agriculture area and the cultivated land under food crops and all the food grains, oil seeds. That is a differentiation, different uh, crops. And accordingly, three uh, serial chart has been created. One is for food to ca cash crop uh, distribution. And I have added a one more uh, chart for percentage food, food crops to cultivated area and crop production. And likewise, I have listed all the uh, districts of Karnataka in the form of list. So once you click on this, uh, once you click on some uh, districts, everything accordingly, all the elements accordingly will be changing. So as you can see, since there is no data for these elements, it is uh, it is uh, displaying us no data and rest informations are updated and the chart is also updated and the map is also updated. So this is the use of uh, dashboard. So I would like to open the stage to Brinda to walk us through interaction on uh, mobile apps. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Drinda, uh, working as senior engineer in History India. So I'll be uh, briefing you on mobile apps from the History Services. Let me share my screen. I hope my screen is visible to everyone. So for today, I will be saying about these uh, mobile apps like Workforce, Navigator, Quick Capture, Survey123, and uh, Together Field Maps. The first one is for uh, Workforce for RJS. So uh, this is a uh, this will lets you plan, manage, and complete your workflow for all the type of field activities. And uh, using Workforce on your uh, smartphone or tablet, you can receive and complete work assigned to you, inform others about your work status, and receive their location based notifications. And that will amplify your productivity. Most of the uh, mobile apps are very much helpful uh, in the field related works. The Workforce uh, integrated with the RJS apps. So uh, the field staff staff can receive assignments, navigate to them and document their completion and navigate to the next task. It is very uh, smooth workflow on the mobile devices. Workforce is a part of RGS platform, so whatever the data is being collected or completed, uh, that will be managed and assigned to your location-based uh, work to your field teams, and that will efficiently monitor the status and the location of the field workers uh, using RGS. Uh, this can be mainly used for uh, field related works like uh, oil, well site of drilling, inspections, vegetation management, whatever is required for a field visit that can be used. Uh, since it's been 
build on ArcGIS platforms, then uh, we can integrate this with multiple ArcGIS apps and also with 3D uh, third party apps like using Python API. For example, a navigator can be used to navigate directly to your work and survey one to three can be used there to capture and inspect the data. The next one is for navigator. The navigator for RGS gets you uh, a field workforce uh, where it needs to be. That is, it will uh, navigate you with a voice guidance and it improves reliability and efficiency. This is not an uh, uh, ordinary turn by turn direction app. Uh, it also allows you as an organization to use your own um, GIS data and also includes searching with your own assets, routing on your own street network and visualizing your own base maps. So it is fully con customizable and uh, all the navigation data is stored locally so you can reliable in remote areas like even without cellular data connections. Then uh, routes for different travel modes like truck, car, bike and walk also are available in navigators. So RGS online includes the ready to use navigator map with ISRI, World Network Data Set, and uh, geocoding services. You can log into your JS uh, organization account and download the map region uh, where you need to navigate and can start using the map. So, but if you want to go for any custom navigator map, the workflow is pretty straightforward. The, there are three components mainly required for creating a custom navigator map. One is base map display and geocoding search and uh, network routing. Uh, as long as you are having all these three, you can create your own navigator map that can be used in the navigator mobile app. But uh, the key thing is that you should focus more about the data quality here because you need to make sure the search works fine and all the routes work fine on your day. For example, uh, if you have any street segments on your data and you don't have any names for those streets, then in that case, the navigator will not going to uh, speak any street names to, during their voice guidance. The same holds true for turn restrictions also. If there is any illegal turns which is not mentioned in our data, then that will affect the quality of the navigator. So the data quality really is the key here, and you all want to uh, invest some time uh, into testing your data if you are going for a custom navigator app. The navigator can also be integrated with other field apps like Workforce Survey 1 to 3. You can send the stop details to navigator from any other apps while collecting the field data. Then from the navigator app, you can find the best routes. So the next is RGS Quick Capture. It's the fastest way uh, like the mobile apps to collect field observations. With a simple app, you can quickly record field observations from a moving vehicle while uh, you scout for any locations or conduct aerial surveys or assess any damages occur. So send the data back to, to the office for analysis in real time. That's also possible and eliminate time spent manually processing hand returns. It is integrated with ArcGIS, so whatever the data is being collected in real time, that new data will be used instantly for a better decision making. Next, we'll go on uh, survey one, two, three. RGS Survey 123 is a form based data collection solution. We can create location aware smart forms to use in the field on the desktop or on the web or by browser also. The data captured is immediately available in the RGS platform. So there are two ways you can create a survey. One is based upon Survey 123 Web Designer, and the second one is based upon Survey 123 Connect. Through the Web Designer, uh, you can quickly create a new survey by dragging and adding the questions into your form and you can reorder the question and configure their properties and add some styles to your survey using themes. When your design is ready, you can click publish and that's done. Your survey is ready to share. And the second one is through uh, survey one to three connect. Typically Excel files are used to create survey through this. For we generally will have four sheets. First one named as survey. It will hold all the questions. The next one will be choices. It will hold all the uh, choices for that question is required. And the third sheet will be settings. 
to define any form title or any other optional parameters or properties available for the survey. And lastly, we'll have types to specify what are the field types or the question parameters. The second part is uh, after publishing a survey, it is to get the response. There is again two ways to get a response from the survey. One is through survey one to three web apps uh, that will be opened to a desktop or any browsers. And second one is on survey one to three field app. So the web app runs on a desktop and mobile browser that is ideal for sharing service to a wide online audience. If you have an online audience, then web will be optimal. Then the field app can be downloaded on your mobile application and that and then we can collect the survey responses whenever you are, even if it's on, sorry, offline. So once the survey is published and then we got some response, we can uh, analyze the data uh, we have received and through the responses. So the analysis tab in the survey one to three presents survey data in charts and tables that help you identify trends and gain insights into your survey responses. You can produce customized eye-catching reports also from survey data. All that you, you have to do is you have to create a template in Microsoft Word and upload to the survey one to three website. So using that template, you can create a Word or PDF documents as a report through for your survey responses, including the summary reports. Again, all the data is stored in RGS, so you can Work with it in RGS web maps or apps or dashboards as we seen earlier and RGS Pro also. The last mobile app we are going to see is RGS field maps. Actually, it is a new mobile app from ISRI that combines data collection, map viewing, and location tracking capabilities into a single app. Uh, like these capabilities we may have seen before in RGS Collector or Explorer or Tracker, but these all combined in a single app now and we can uh, have potential to use this. So these were uh, uh, like for working persons, they have uh, multiple mobile apps is very challenging for them. Uh, they require to uh, figure out which app to use for which assignment and download it and need to sign in to their uh, individual credentials. And I have to download if they are working in offline mode, then they have to download multiple copies of map data to work in offline and they have to switch between apps for completing a works, their workforce or task. So, but with ArcGIS field maps, you only need one app to download, sign into, and work. The field maps is all a mobile workforce needs to conduct inspections or collect data or track worker locations or perform any other activity in the field. So when collecting data, you can select assets from the feature template and add by filling out smart forms. Again, uh, for viewing map here, uh, works just like as collector and explorer. You can use overflow menu in the field maps to change your base map or access bookmarks, uh, view map legend, and measure between points in the map. Then share map uh, in the field maps enables quick sharing of your maps with others. And markup is another feature. It allows you to cap capture sketches and add markers to your map. Also, notes and labels can be added to communicate the additional information. Location tracking allows so supervisors to know where their mobile workers are and where they are exactly working in the field. So we have a, a, a quick demo on field maps since it's covering most of all the mobile apps. Let me show some video. There are uh, majorly five different uh, features we can explore on the field maps. Uh, there are more to explore for you, of course, but these five things are smart cool features in field maps. Let me go through one by one. The first is viewing our maps. 
for and locate features on your map using the search function. Field Maps allows you to tap on map features to view information about that feature. Need directions to a feature? Tap on any feature and use the directions or compass tools to access directions on your device. You can easily navigate to an area or a feature on the map using the bookmarks tool. Tap the Add to My Places button to add a feature or area to your map's list of bookmarks. Tap on a bookmark and the map will pan and zoom to that area. The Field Maps map viewing experience goes beyond just viewing features and bookmarking areas. You can also view the map legend and all of the map layers. Show or hide map layers by toggling the button next to a layer of interest. If you want to change the overall look of a map, try changing the base map. Need to take measurements while working in the field? Measure the distance and area on any map using the measure tool. You can even configure the measurement units based on what makes sense for your workflow. So as we've seen, uh, we can customize uh, the look, so uh, how the field will be or how the layer will be viewing in the map. Like we are creating a base map itself. So the second one will be uh, how we can use the sketch and take notes using this field as that will be stored as a markup layer in your local device. Markup allows you to capture sketches and notes on top of any map. These sketches are stored as a layer on your device, so updates made to the map won't affect your markup layers. Want to indicate points of interest on your map? Use markers to point out important sites or features. Add a label and notes to your marker to describe what it is and its importance. Try adding sketches to your map by using your finger to draw lines or shapes. Like markers, you can label and add notes to these sketches. Additionally, you can change the color of your drawings and fill in shapes with color. Share markups with others using the share markup function. The next one we are going to see about how we can collect the data on field using the fields. Data collection can be done on any map enabled for editing using the add button. Tapping the add button adds a new data point to the map and brings up any pre-configured feature templates. Pressing on a feature type from the template will bring up a pre-configured editable form that you can fill out and add data to when performing inspections or other data collection activities. Tapping submit updates the new data point in both field maps and in Map Viewer and ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise. The next thing we'll be going to see is how we can use an offline uh, map area. Like if we are going for any field location where the network connection will not be that much good, then we, we can download it prior and then that can be used while we're working on the field. You can create a map area that can be used offline. Map areas package your data, base maps, and any attachments within a defined extent of the map. Downloading this package to your device then allows you to view assets and collect data while offline. Map areas are defined in the Field Maps mobile app by tapping the Add Offline Area button for a map enabled for offline use. Doing this allows you to define your map area and download it to your map. You can then work with the map offline and once you are connected to the internet, Sync any updates you made with your office and other mobile work. Then the last thing we're going to see about field maps is tracking our location. So this will be helpful for uh, the if we are working as a team and have to monitor the progress, then we can go for tracking, which is already embedded in the field maps. Location tracking is enabled for your organization and you have an ArcGIS tracker license. Toggling the My Tracks map card in your maps list will turn your location tracking on and off. With tracking on, location tracking allows you to know where your mobile workers are and where they've been. 
it also allows mobile workers to view their tracks on their maps. Tracks are saved as a My Tracks layer on your map that can be turned on and off from the layer. So uh, now that we have uh, seen all the mobile apps, uh, we can uh, now open for questions. So if there are any queries uh, on field maps or dashboards or web app builder, everyone is open to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Brinda, uh, Gayatri, Ali Jyoti. Um, uh, we had some questions coming in on the chat box. Um, um, starting off with Ismail. Uh, Ismail, I hope your your queries have been answered. If uh, if you're tired of typing, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, we'd love to have a chat here itself. Uh, anyone else, um, please feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, we have the team over here. Uh, any questions, any doubts, any feedback? We're we're open to all. Hello. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, Thank it's you so fine. Much, Hi. Uh, I'm the team here, sorry. It's an amazing session from all, all three of you. And uh, I would like to join more sessions in the future. Thank you. It's awesome. Thanks a lot, Ismail. Great to have you We still have about 10, 12 minutes, but we'll stay on for for a few at least um, in case you guys have uh, any follow up questions. If you want to even type it out in the chat box, whatever you're comfortable with, we'll stay on for a few minutes. So I guess we are good for now. Um, I think most of the questions have already been answered. Uh, Ali Jyoti, Kaitri, Brinda, I think uh, session delivered well. Um, uh, assuming there are no questions, so I think uh, it's been fairly clear. But either ways, if uh, if you if you have questions uh, that are outside of this particular session. Uh, please feel free to uh, drop us an email at developer at sre.in. I have uh, put it in the chat box. Uh, Ismail, we do have the recordings. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll share recordings of 
sessions uh, one, two, three, and four. Um, I'll put them in the chat box right away. Um, the fifth, as uh, as was mentioned earlier, was rescheduled and should happen on the 19th. Uh, today's recording should be ready uh, soon and we'll share that as well. So I'll just, before we wrap up, put, put in the links to the first four sessions in the chat box. So I've shared the YouTube link for the recordings, workshops one through four. We'll uh, either ways be uh, dropping you an email with all the previous recordings. Uh, so I think uh, we are we are good to to wrap up the session for today. Uh, thank you everyone uh, again for joining. Uh, sort of a marathon session, uh, three three parts of back to back. Uh, but thanks for staying on. Thanks for uh, asking your questions. And uh, we look forward to meeting you guys again next Friday. Uh, you'll be hearing from us uh, on the session. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much and have a fantastic weekend ahead. Uh, take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all.